Alright, welcome back. So, in this next clip, we are still on chapter 3. Uh, this is the 12th part, sorry, 13th part, yeah? We have just finished the 12th part. So, we are going to look at the last category of ratios, which is market value ratios, yeah? Or market ratios, yeah? So, um, the, there are four ratios here. A price earnings ratio, price sales ratio, market to book ratio, and EBITDA ratio, yeah? Now, price earnings ratio is also a very popular ratio. Okay, now before that, yeah, we look at the market value ratio. What does it measure? Yeah, it measures the market's confidence on the firm's future earning ability. <laughs> right. When we say market, yeah, we are uh, referring to the investors in the market. Yeah. Okay. So uh, as a as a group, okay, what do the investors think? Yeah. What is their the investors' confidence? about a, f a given firm's future earning ability. The more confident they are, then higher these ratios. Yeah? That's the basic idea behind these market value ratios. Uh, and these market value ratios will depend on one important uh, financial information, yeah? which is the uh, the share price of the company. Yeah? All right, so the first uh, ratio is called price earnings ratio and this is a very famous yeah, and popular ratio also known as the PE ratio price earnings ratio yeah? right, let's move down a little bit okay so you can see the notes okay now price earnings ratio measures the share price as the multiple yeah as the multiple of the firm's earnings so it reflects the price market is willing to pay per share given current earnings of one dollar per share yeah so that's the basic idea of earnings, uh, price earnings ratio. So here, in order to compute, we take the market price per share or one share, uh, that divided by the earnings per share. Yeah? Because this is per share, the, uh, the numerator is per share, the denominator also needs to be per share. Yeah? So earnings per share is net income divided by number of shares. Yeah? So we can take this 893 divided by 190.9. Yeah, this, these are two, both these numbers yeah, are in millions. And therefore, you can <coughs> divide directly. Yeah? Okay, so 87.65 divided by this divided by that. Yeah? Therefore, you get 18.74 times. This is again a multiple. Yeah? So it reflects that. Uh, the market price okay, or the share price yeah, is 18.74 times the company's uh, current earnings per share. Okay, that's the idea. Yeah? So if the uh, earnings per share for the company is $1, the market is willing to pay $18.74 per share yeah, to buy that share. Why is that? Yeah? Uh, it is not because of current earnings, yeah? but it is because of future uh, earnings. Yeah? The market is confident that in the future, the earnings is going to be high, then they are willing to pay a higher price now for the right to have that future earnings. Okay, so that's the basic idea. Yeah? So higher this ratio reflects higher the confidence about the future earning ability of the company. Yeah? But of course, we compare this yeah, relative to the current earnings. Yeah? The denominator is always the current earnings here. Yeah? Alright, so the next ratio, that's the first ratio uh, under market value ratios. The second ratio is called price sales ratio. So the numerator is again share price, but divided by the denominator is different here. The denominator is sales per share not earnings per share but we take sales per share yeah so sales per share you take sales here five thousand divided by the number of shares 190.9 yeah so you get sales per share then you take price per share divided by sales per share you get this value here yeah? 3.35 again this is 3.35 times these are all times yeah 3.35 times it means that the uh, company's share price yeah, is 3.35 times the current or uh, the, the 2018, end of 2018's uh, sales per share. So if the sales per share was $1 at the end of 2018, 
the investors in the market are willing to pay 3.35 times yeah, or three dollars and 35 cents for every share yeah? so that's the uh, implication yeah? so that is uh, price sales ratio higher this ratio means higher the market confidence about the future earning ability of the company uh, relative yeah, or compared to the current earnings or sorry current sales per share yeah? all right then the next ratio this is uh, among these three ratios yeah? this is uh, widely used and market to book ratio is also very popular yeah? but price sales ratio is not widely used okay but this is covered in the textbook therefore it is important to know this yeah? now market to book ratio is market to book ratio of equity yeah? even, even though it doesn't state that clearly it is market to book ratio of equity not assets yeah? so here we take the market value of equity divide this by the book value of equity there are two ways of computing this yeah? you can compute this based on total equity value or you can compute based on per share value yeah? so let's look at the per share value okay how do you compute the market to book ratio on a per share basis yeah? So here you need to get the market value per share, which is the market price, it is 7.65. Then you need to get the book value per share. How do you get the book value per share? You go to the balance sheet and take the total equity value. Yeah? This is the book value of total equity. But you need the book value per share. Yeah? Therefore, you take this value, a okay, common equity, divide this by the number of shares, yeah? 1 by 0 0.9. So that gives you the book value per share. Then you take the market price divided by the book value per share, you get 6.04. Okay, that's one way of doing that. Another way would be taking the market value of total equity. How do you get the market value of total equity? You take these two, yeah, the product of these two, that means 87.65 multiplied by 190.9. Yeah? Then you divide with the book value of total equity, which is this 2768. Okay, you get the same answer, yeah, which is 6.04. Note that this is also a multiple, yeah, 6.04 times. So here it means that the market, yeah, the market or the investors in the market are willing to pay 6.04 times for every share, yeah, okay, compared to the current book value per share yeah? 6.04 times yeah? why are they willing to pay more than six times the current book value again the book value is dependent on what uh, the investors have uh, uh, invested yeah? previously in the company the, the shareholders have invested previously in the company but the market price depends on the future earning ability. Yeah? So higher the future earning ability, the confidence that the investors have in the future earning ability, they are willing to pay a higher price for the share. Okay, that is why it is uh, six times higher. Yeah? Is that okay? So generally a healthy company will have a market to book ratio of greater than one. Yeah? If it is less than one, then uh, there is some uh, likely problems yeah? so we have to investigate further why this is less than one yeah all right so in this case it is more than one okay so the market value is greater than the book value yeah? which is uh, a good sign all right and the last ratio is called the EBITDA ratio and yeah? this is also a market ratio so what does this measure okay let's move down a bit to see the notes here yeah it measures the market value of the firm's operating assets as the multiple yeah, of the firm's operating cash flow. Yeah? So first we need to compute the market value of the firm's operating assets. Then you need to divide that with the firm's operating cash flow. Yeah? So that is the basic formula. For this I think it is best to go back to the slides. Yeah? Let's go to the slides now. Okay, yeah, let's do a quick review. Let me just move this uh, screen yeah, slightly. Right, yeah. 
So we have seen this. Okay, we've covered liquidity ratio very quickly. Yeah, let's see uh, this. Okay, ratios can be given in decimal. Okay, decimal means uh, the ratio is in times. Yeah. Uh, or multiple. So the numerator is seen as a multiple of the denominator. Yeah? So that's an important point. Sometimes ratios are given in percentage. Okay, when a ratio is, is much less than one, it is often given in percentage. Yeah, i.e., the numerator is seen as a proportion of the denominator. Yeah? So that's how you interpret that in yeah? proportion of the denominator. Okay, let's move on. Uh, Okay, some ratios can be given in the unit of days, yeah, like here, days, number of days, yeah. Alright, let's move on. This we have, we have also, uh, already completed a yeah, discussion, long-term solvency ratio. And coverage ratios also. Inventory, this is asset management ratio or asset efficiency ratio, we have covered this. Also this, yeah. Uh, receivables, total asset to number, fixed asset to number, and networking. Uh, capital to the world, yeah? and also profitability measures. We have covered this, okay. And we have, uh, look, we have also covered PE ratio, market to book ratio. We have covered that. Now, this is where we were discussing. Yeah? So, here we want to compute the market value of operating assets of the company. Yeah? So, this is also known as the enterprise value. Okay, so the market value of the company's operating assets is also known as the enterprise value. Yeah? So how do you get this enterprise value? Let me just get the pointer here. Alright, yeah, how do you get the enterprise value? You get, uh, you take the market value of shares or market value of equity. How do you get that? You take the market price per share, multiply this with the number of shares outstanding. Yeah? So that gives you the market value of equity plus the book value of liabilities. Why do you add the book value and not the market value? Because the book value and the market value are likely to be the same. Yeah? If there is a difference, it's going to be very small, negligible difference. Yeah? Therefore, we just take the book value of liabilities. Right? And then you minus cash. Why do you minus cash? If you ignore this cash for the moment, you take the market value of equity, you plus the market book value or market value is the same thing. So here is equity, then you plus with liability. So this will be total asset value here. Yeah? Now, this is the market value of total assets. If you add these two, this will be the market value of total assets, but you minus cash. Why do you minus cash? Because cash is not an operating asset. Yeah? Strictly speaking, it's not an operating asset. So we want to know the value of operating assets only, yeah? the market value of operating assets. So we minus cash. But another reason is that uh, usually this cash, yeah, when it's uh, in cash form, okay, uh, it can disappear very quickly in any company. Yeah? So due to fraud or due to leakages or whatever, yeah? Therefore, cash is discarded. It's it's not taken into into account. Yeah, so you deduct this yeah, in order to get the uh, enterprise value. Yeah, so that is why cash is deducted. So this will give you the market value of uh, the operating assets of the company. Then the EBITDA ratio is actually uh, the EBITDA. Yeah, here the denominator. Is simply the operating cash flow of the company. The operating cash flow of the company is simply EBIT or earnings before interest and tax plus depreciation. Yeah? Why do you add depreciation? Because depreciation is not a cash outflow. You add this back in order to get the operating cash flow. Yeah? So you take this value divided by the operating cash flow, you get 15.52 times. And this indicates the market value of operating assets relative to a dollar of operating income or cash flow, yeah? Right, so that is the implication, yeah? So we, when you go back to this, you get 15.52 times. So how do you interpret this? It means that the company's operating, yeah, market value of operating assets is 15.52 times the company's current operating cash flow, yeah? So this also reflects the uh, confidence the market has in the future earning ability yeah? that is why this is quite high yeah? right? if it is lower then the confidence is lower